Welcome to the next section about how to access external systems via HTTP. We're going to see how we can access HTTP resources using the JAXRS client, how we can read these resources and map request and response bodies to Java types. Then we're going to see some more extended client usage and also how to make the client lookups and client requests more resilient. And then we're going to see how we can use asynchronous JAXRS client functionality. And the first video is about how to access HTTP using the JAXRS client. We're going to see how we can use the client functionality with the client and web target type, how we can read resources and also how we can map request and response bodies to Java types. So in our car factory that we had, the CDI managed bean, we set the identifier of a new car to some random UUID. If in our case we would say rather than this we want to access an external system that creates a new a unique identifier for us, we would have to do that using HTTP in our case. So we have to do that using an HTTP client. And fortunately, JAXRS and Java EE ships with a client functionality that we can use in our case. Let's say we want to have a post construct method that will init the client functionality. That means we use the client builder type from JAXRS to create a new client. And now that client will be part of this bean. So in our case, we, ma we make this bean application scoped so that we can reuse this client types. Type. Client types are quite heavy objects and therefore we want to re reuse them. Client.target creates a new web target. Web targets are resources that we can access basically URIs. So we can create a new target from a URI or a string such as cars example.com. Let's say we call this cars and then identification. So we can post and create a new identification using this URI, using this service. And now this should also be part of the bean so we can access it. And then in our case, we want to, let's say, retrieve a car identification from our specification. For example, we had to provide some, some information for that. And now we can use that target to do new requests. So target.request starts a new builder for a new request. And now we can request some content type. That means we ask for a specific content type using the media type again, for example, for JSON, in the same way like we had a JAXRS resources. And then we can use some functionality, for example, to get and post and uh, post and put and so on and so forth, HTTP requests on that specific target on that resource. For example, we can post some information there. And the requ requ request and response bodies we have are mapped to Java types similarly like we had in JAXRS resources. That means we can use any type that JAXRS knows about, for example, the JSON object, the JSONP type that we already had. We call this entity and then create a new well, a request body using the builder pattern. For example, let's say we have to provide the engine that comes from a specification, the engine type and the name of the enum. And we build this into a JSON object and then we have the entity. And now for the post method, we can use the entity type that comes from JAXRS and that is a wrapper for our actual entity object and also media type. So we can create one or simply call JSON to be the JSON content type and then we post this information there. And by posting, we create a new response. And the response is already the, the HTTP response we get. So that has a status code and all the information and of course the response for us. So now we could ask the response for, for example, the status information, which HTTP status that is, and check for the information, or as a shortcut, directly read the entity. And by reading the entity, this assumes that the response is somewhat successful and has the appropriate entity, and this is mappable in that requested content type. For example, we could ask for simplest example for a string class and get a string type, or in our case, since we ask for JSON, we can map some entity via JSON automatically, either a POJO or in our case, even a JSON object, if we do not want to create a specific type for that. And now this provides us a JSON object, which we can ask 
to provide some information. For example, let's assume we get a JSON object back that has one key identifier. That includes our newly created car identifier. And now this can be returned in our method. And now, in order to make this a little bit more readable, let's say let's create some um, inner some inner private methods for it. For example, build request body and then send request. That gives us the response and then extract the identifier from the given response. So this is a little bit more readable. And this is already sufficient to access our system via the JAXRS client. What we also should do at the end, close the client again to prevent resource leaks once the application server shuts down. And now, actually, this car factory has two concerns. First of all, it creates a car based on the given specification. And then it also contains the logic how to access that system, how to um, get a new identifier. And this is not the best uh, thing to do. So actually, let's outsource this information. Let's say we extract this functionality into a delegate. So we create a new control that we can also inject a new, for example, CDI managed bean that we call identifier accessor, for example. And that resides in the control package. And let's say has all these members. That in our case are extracted here as well. And therefore we can remove this information from the car factory, which now doesn't have to be an application scope bean anymore. We simply inject the identifier accessor and now we have to remove all that information that the IDE generates for us since we're in a Java enterprise environment. And clean up this class as well. Create that functionality similarly like we had before. And then we access the information in a similar way, now using a dedicated delegate for it, the identifier accessor, which now will be our application scoped bean. So this is now CDI managed bean that handles all the logic how to access that external system. And the car factory just uses this to retrieve a new car identification. And this is how we can ex uh, access external systems via HTTP using the JAXOS client.